Now we've seen how we can create charts of various types based on our data, but what you can also do is mix these chart types on the same chart. Now that might not seem very useful, but it can have its uses. So if we take our data sales file 2013, and we're going to highlight the data we would like to chart. So that's normally our labels and our numbers, and we'll use the quick keyboard shortcut, which I'm hoping you've remembered by now, F11. And that will create us our default chart, which is the column chart. Now, if I want, for example, the orange bars, which are the south, to actually be graphed on a different type of graph, I don't want these to be columns, I want these to be bars or lines, just to show comparison or make the graph look different. We simply click on one of the series points and it selects all of them. We then go to change chart type, and because I have a series selected, it's giving me this custom combination choice where I can change any one of the series, so there's four of them, and I want to change the south into a different chart type. Now the options are then in the little drop down, and we've got other types of column, bars, lines, areas, pies, x, y, and radar. So I want to change the south chart type into a line chart. In the preview, you can see what's going to happen. It charts it and up it goes across the scale. Now there is an option here to have a secondary axis. For the moment, I'm not going to choose that. And when we say OK, we see everything works on the same scale, except instead of a bar, I've got a line. So the sails for the south are effectively joined together to create this line. Now logically in our data, that doesn't make any sense joining them together because we're joining helicopters sold to speedboats sold to horses sold. It's not a progression of numerical data across time but it does show that we can change one series for another type. I could do the same with the gray, change chart type, and the gray is the east, well let's change that into a bar. You can see they will then run horizontally. Okay, now that doesn't look quite as good. They're starting to look quite messy now and not making much sense whatsoever. Let's undo that last option. So the gray ones go back to columns. Now one of the options when we had the line created or the south was the potential to have a secondary axis. If we go back into the chart type and actually choose that secondary axis, what you'll see is the columns all then shoot up because the line is being mapped against this secondary axis on the right hand side, which has been automatically created based on the values within the south region. So if I then say OK, I see that the bars, columns really, are measured against this side. The tallest there, the grey one, is 2296, and that goes across there to the scale. The line, however, is measured to the right-hand axes, and the value there is 4774, comes across and meets about 4774. By having these secondary scales, you can actually map what effectively is larger values onto the same graph and not have such mini, mini sizes. I mean, the planes were tiny when they were all mapped at the same relative height. Now that we've taken out the larger values, so the south region, and has its own scale, things look a bit more relative. Although we would need to look at the scale to see that orange is much more than that grey, graphically and presentation-wise, this looks much neater and less of a skew between the smallest and the largest values. Now one reason why you might want to do this mixing of graph types really comes into its own if we go back to our Jan sales and actually include the totals. So I'm including these totals here and we'll do our F11 again. Now the graph does get completely skewed when we add in the totals. So let's do a little switch row so that we can then see each of the regions and all of our total values are then listed as quite massive bars. Let's select one of those. You actually need anything selected really to go into change chart type give me this clustered option. And what I want to do is take away the sold totals and not have it included in these clustered columns, but actually perhaps put them as a bar so they go across. So you can see individual regions then have vertical columns, but the grand totals are then changed around and put as horizontal rows so that they're not skewing the bottom graph. Now that in itself doesn't look that appealing, but if I change that total sold for example, to a pie, then that pie chart will sit behind and potentially look easier to read. So if I say OK, I then have my four regions with each of the bars for the items sold 
and then on the pie chart behind that then divides up the totals sold into the whole area so i can see that the south pretty much got half of the total sales of everybody so here mixing chart types on the same graph actually looks and makes a lot more sense they still respond to the changes in the data so if i go back in here let's change the south so it perhaps isn't so dominant some big numbers up here let's drop those seriously drop them and then relook at our chart two which is the combine chart and now pretty much people are on a par really just about quarter each 30 percent 30 percent 21 percent 19 percent so that's mixing chart types all you need to do to be able to mix a second chart type into your chart is select any one of the series columns bars or lines and then go to design change chart type you'll then be offered this custom combination where you can choose which series to change into which chart type